Welcome to the session about services in Joomla. It's not about web services, it's more like some internal architecture stuff. I'm Alan Moritz, I'm from Switzerland, I'm doing Joomla extensions since 2007. I have my own company um, where we mainly do Joomla extension, custom development and a little bit of consultancy. Actually, I'm, I'm involved in a couple of teams in Joomla, I'm part of the leadership team. Uh, yeah, I like to get some, uh, make my hands dirty in Joomla. The agenda of today is like I want to introduce the, or talk a bit about the concept of inversion of control, um, depends injection, the VI container we have now in Joomla 4, um, then the services from core, and the new way of how you can access extensions in Joomla, and then how you can override services, and how we did all of that in a backwards compatible way. And the last part is question um, round, but if you have questions during the presentation, don't hesitate to ask. The concept of inversion control is kind of like, um, let's say that it's, um, you basically, mostly you do in classes, you set up your own environment. And inversion of control is that you define what you want and the class which is calling you has the, the job of defining the environment of that. It allows you to concentrate in a class of what you should do and not to um, care about other stuff. It's kind of I like this the second sentence, don't call us we will call you. It's like really, if you want, if you want that, use that class, then we have to provide you this and this. It's kind of like the outside world is controlling then the class behavior. Dependency injection is a design pattern, <laughs> which is actually implementing that. It sounds like rocket science, but actually it's not. It's really something something simple which most of you already do but probably not um, not with the mindset of dependency injection behind it when we work with dependency injection there often we work with interfaces a di container which manages the object and their libraries which are implementing or supporting a DI container. they are simple ones which are more or less just the in-memory store of objects and there are more advanced ones which can do auto wiring and caching and all this kind of stuff. Let's have a look what actually depends the injection is. We have this awesome model. The above classes, on the left hand side, you have um, uh, an example with dependency injection and on the right hand side you have it with a hard-coded dependency. It's really just like an example you probably never do that in that way even when you don't want to do uh, dependency injection but for illustration purposes it, it's, uh, it's a good example. The awesome model it has basically a function to do some work and when it starts doing that work it wants to lock something and when it fish, finished it, it wants to lock that the work is done. All of that into a logger. So the difference between the dependency injected code and the hard coded code is only con the constructor. Here we see when we inject the dependency that we get as parameter a logger interface. Um, we don't know actually what this interface does but if you want to use the awesome model you have to provide that logger interface on the other side here in the constructor we actually we build our own logger by our own and this i guess is obvious what the disadvantage is if you want to create a new logger or like log to a different system 
you have to change the model. In this simple example, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it would be just a one line change and everything is good. But if you have a large code base like we have in Joomla, then things are starting to get more complex. Because here, when I inject the dependency, it the awesome model doesn't know what for a logger it gets. If it's a file system logger, a memory logger, logstash logger, it basically it doesn't care. It just knows I wanna, I have a logger available, and there I can log. Is the principle of dependency injection more or less clear? It sounds like a little bit crazy, but when you actually have an example, it's it's not that. Rocket side. One thing I found out because I've been looking into dependency injection because we have in the is in Juma is you have only one um, parameter here for the constructor that at some point in my code I have to do five or six um, and then the place that is calling it I have to do new this new this new this just to satisfy the constructor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have you seen any problems like that within Juma? Um, we. Basically, because it's uh, it's like really we, we have to go step in baby steps with that to keep all the backwards compatibility in this time. So we didn't came to that uh, to that place already. But I mean, it's obvious in the MVC in the MVC stack we have so many different dependencies, and they are putting them then all into the construction gets quite big. And yeah, I ended up at some point that I stopped into a circular reference for my. <laughs> Dependency injection because the one is calling that and that then needs the other one. Yeah, but then you have an architecture problem with it. Oh, yeah, that's why I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there I will explain that later. Then there is that's a construction injection. You can also do setter injection, then things get more simpler. But yeah, there is like uh, I see it also like it starts becoming difficult, especially when we see what we have in, in the Joomla community a big area of experienced developers. Some have re very little experience. Some are like really with the latest technologies and everything. And to have here then something which basically works and is not too complex for many, that's a big challenge we will have. And at the moment, I can't, I don't see a really solution for that. I mean, I saw a blog, a Twitter post about the guy um, I guess he's from Doctrine or something like that. And he had like a massive construction with like, every, I don't know how many arguments and then a factory of another construction. And it was like, and he was very proud about that. He says, that's how sh he likes that. And <laughs> yeah, and it's like, it's about different, like, yeah, programming techniques, how you want to have stuff. And yeah, for Joomla, we kind of like need to find in a way how we do that, that it not becomes too complex. Recap. Um, dependency injection, as I said, you often work with interfaces. An interface is kind of a contract. You can treat it as a contract because you, the interface has just has no code. It's just like declaration of function. Um, you don't have to care on the class itself about the implementation. The outside world needs to um, needs to take care of that. As I said, also there is there are two ways to injecting dependencies. One is constructor in the injection. The other is set, setter injection. In the constructor injection, um, basically for me, when I do that, then it's a required dependency, a mandatory dependency. And when you have set to this um, injection, it's a kind of optional dependency. When we go back to our awesome model, it's like if you have a set logger function where you pass a logger interface, then you kind of like, it's for me optional, then, in, then you have to do in the working function, a check if the logger is not null, then log, otherwise just don't log. There are different opinions about these approaches, like different developers have different ways of doing things. For me, it best worked like that, that I say, if I require something in my class, then I do a constructor injection, otherwise I do setter injection. And as also already mentioned, we have a container which manages the whole object, but that 
I will explain them now in the next chapter. A DI container is basically a store of objects or has like is providing objects and we introduced that in Joomla 4. That was Michael Babke. It's a library from our own Joomla framework. Um, we are not using an external one. Uh, the DI container from there is PSR 11 compatible. That's a kind of committee. They define interfaces which then different PHP project can implement if they want. It's like some people from different PHP project which are in that committee, I guess from Joomla, it's Robert Deutz, if I'm not wrong, and they in their draft 11, they defined an interface for a DI container. Actually in Joomla, we have a core container. The core container manages in one way, it manages the application and the global services. We have now services in the DI container like for uh, documents, forms, um, databases, almost everything which you basically did before JFactory get blah blah blah. A new thing we have in Joomla is now containers on the extension level. It's a way that um, the extension can now set up his dependency in a container because when you when you use a DI container you first define all the, the setup and in the container itself you can then manage all the different dependencies and we have that now also on, a, on an extension level. A benefit of that or the advantage of that is that you basically can override these services. I will explain that later then in more detail. The container itself, it has, the interface itself has basically two functions, a setter function and the getter function. You see it's really simple, you have a key and you provide the resource and when you later want to get that resource you have a, you have a getter function where you can pass the key. This is a screenshot of a pull request I did for the form service, like before you did jform get instance and now you can then get now we do that over form factory you see here we have a, a share function it's a shortcut function for set set that has multiple arguments like if it's shareable if it's protected overridable this kind of stuff and share is just like a shortcut function but the important part is that you have here um, a key and in that case a callback function which gets called when the first time or always when you make container get. You can also pass it just new form factory but you mostly don't want to create the object when you set up the container you want to create them when it gets called the first time kind of like lazy loading. See many people when you face is that concept clear? It's a little bit of new way. If you want, you can have a look on the pull request uh, 16,483. It's, um, it's a way where I, in, where I uh, made a pull request to move from JFORM, get instance to, the, to a form factory. This form factory has a, just a simple func function, get um, create form, which is then creating a JFORM instance. Services in core, like we were um, services that before you do J factory, even get document, get language, get session, and basically all these kind of static calls we move into the DI container and treat them as a service in the in the container itself. So this will like remove then the dependency that in your class you have to do j factory get document you basically then can fetch the doc or like not fetch the document from the container because then it's kind of service locator and that's an anti-pattern it's a uh, you can then like on a high level you can fetch the, the document out of the container and inject that into the classes then as I said, these services are globally from the container. 
they are not static and they are shared. So you get always the same instance, for example, if you request the document service, you get the same instance out of the, of the container. Actually, we have um, 14 service providers in core, which are providing different services. You can have a logger, a menu, pathway. Basically, we migrated in the first step almost everything which has a get instance function or you can access from JFactory. The most important one is the application. It's really on the beginning when you look on the index.php file of Joomla Core, not, of the, not on the template, but of Joomla Core, you will see there that it's um, doing JFactory get container and then getting the application out of that. And it callbacks then to the provider interface. And this is Joomla 4, right? Not 3.9 or 3.8? It's Joomla 4. Actually, we have kind of like this idea to provide or backport these features to Joomla 3 that you can really use that. But all of the DI stuff on DI container stuff, I'm not sure if you're really going to backport them and that you kind of like have if you want to have a namespace extension with all these new features that you kind of like have then need to keep a legacy file which gets then executed because i guess we're not going to backport the di container the di container itself i think is already in current release right now in three i don't think so okay. well no guarantee i can't <laughs> well, <was> <laughs> Even as I said, it's like a common question is then how do we do that then now in extensions? It's basically the end target is then that we say, okay, all of the dependencies need to be injected. But it's like it will be a long, long way to, to move to that point. I guess with the lifetime of Joomla 4 would not be, will not be enough for that then. But... Yeah, at the end goal, we made a couple of examples, like with the form factory, I made a pull request which basically gets the form factory out of the container and injected it all the way down to the form model. That basically you don't have to do in the form model J form get instance or something like that. It, you have that as a dependency in the constructor passed all the way down. For sure, in a backwards compatible way, otherwise we're going to break a lot of extensions. Um, as I said already, there is a new way how you can boot now an extension and how the extension sets up then itself and you have a unified way of accessing now an extension. You have a component instance which you basically I give show then afterwards an example. You have a component instance. You have now a provider file which does then set up all the dependencies in the container. And all of that is working in child container of the main container we have in Joomla core. So in your child container you will then have access to the elements of the parent container. What you can do now in Joomla 4 is on the application there is a boot component function and you're getting back uh, an instance of a component. This component can then provide some services like what we did now is we migrate the com or we introduce that, introduce that new concept in com content. Next couple of weeks I want to do the PRs then for the for the next, uh, for the rest of the components, I guess this morning George did one for COM modules, I guess. And the principle of that is that we have this register function. It's similar to what we saw before for the form factory. And here you basically set up the dependency of your container. So the end, end result when I do app boot component but here is dollar component is finally then an instance of this class here. And that's a content component which has function like get dispatcher and it implements some interfaces where you can get an MVC factory out of that, categories, associations. So you don't have to do 
um, J categories get instance anymore, you can boot the component you want to have the categories for, and then you're getting back a categories object. The benefit of that instead of what we have now is that now we, re we rely heavily on file system paths. And this approach here now gives full control to the extension developer to set up his, his own uh, services and dependencies. So for example, we have some, some just one second, we have some uh, uh, default implementation of an MVC factory, which pay, or in this case, an a factory of factories which creates MVC factory which are managing tables and models and views and we are providing default classes for that that you don't have to repeat or copy all the code but you can always use your own implementation for that so basically what what creates your instances of all these kind of services is now fully controlled and fully in your hand Peter? Uh, yeah, so uh, the content component needs the categories, therefore it's set at the beginning. But what about authentication? Because I saw it was also uh, a service. About what? Authentication, ACL. Is, should it also be set somewhere like this? I'm not sure actually what the authentication really does. Is it uh, ACL or is it like login? ACL is it. And another thing. What if you want to have tags in your component? Should you also make it available like this? Um, if tags would be a service? Actually, we have. There was, there was once this guy who made um, like this publishing item, like count items, this count item function in the categories views. And that's now also part of the category service. I can show you the interface. Um, interface now. Uh, we have now can you see it? Or is it a bit should I make it bigger? You see here, that's the category service interface. Is it, is it too dark? Eh? Better turn off the light. Oh, yeah. So basically, we have here this function get categories. So you can do um, boot component, and then you, you're getting a, a component interface back. And you have, can test there then if this component implements. Um, com category service interface and then you know that this component has categories and you can do then get categories or count items or this kind of stuff. Question about that code. The public function get categories has at the end of the line categories. Yeah. Is it PHP 7.1 or 7.2 or already 7.0? 7.0. 7.1 would be that you can um, pass, I guess, multiple return values or null or something like that. But this here is PHP 7 compatible. I guess we we'll probably... Um, I guess it would be also probably interesting to see how this extends. If you can boot a component, I think that makes the way available to have multiple components on, on a single page. Yeah, you can get the dispatcher out of that and yeah. Because now, of course, in Joomla you can only have one component on the front mm -hmm. page. But this way I can see you can, you would technically be able able to have multiple components having output on your page. Yeah, because now it's also the, com the controller is now managed in an MVC factory and you don't get a single instance out of that, which provides in all this kind of like static 
just one static reference in before it was like J controller legacy get instant yeah. and there was just one reference and this is all gone now so yeah it's like we we kind of like have a lot of possibilities we don't even know what we have but it's we are sure that this is a kind of like a way to go for the future and that even like also with i have a pull request open which applies the same architecture changes for modules we kind of we want to go away from like this path pathway of configuration that you you kind of like need to follow a certain structure it's now everything like you can even use your own um, your own uh, namespace you don't have to follow the namespace pattern from joomla it's like everything goes back into control in a programmatically way it's not like that the core is enforcing you to do some stuff it's just like because we're working with interfaces and these kind of things that you can now provide your own dependencies and your own environment for example here this is the content component it's a bit bigger and you see here there there is basically there is a lot of implements here like bootable mvc factory categories fields there's for fields of service associations and I made now a pull request for also the router that you can get the router of a component as a service but you don't have to implement all of that we also at the same time we provide traits does everybody know what the trait is it's kind of like a copy of a code snippet so basically to um, to have category service to provide that you just have to implement the use um, uh, just to use the trait of categories and you get a basic implementation of all this all this function so for example the code which get copied from one extension helper class to another which does all the database query is now in the trait and basically the only thing you have to provide in your extension or here in the component class is like the table name where to fetch the items for that it's really like we tried to like to make it as easy as possible to kind of like implement in the services because now I know if a component is implementing that uh, for example category service interface we know that this component has categories before we had like we were looking I guess into the into the file system if a, if a class if a file exists with the categories the PHP name and then we were loading that and expecting a class and this kind of stuff. It allows you allows us also to to switch easily between front end and back end, um, just to have not anymore this one class problem. As I as I said, in that just small excursive of how we are doing boot how we are booting an extension gets then a bit like we'll see then why and why we are doing that also when we see how services get over it because when we have now the services in a in a container with um with a key and basically a key and the value or a resource for that it allows us to override the services till now if you want to provide your own implementation of, for example, of JDocument, you had to write the system plugin. In the system plugin, you had to copy the PHP file of JDocument into your system plugin. And then in the, I guess, in the on after initialize event, you had to register that file then as implementation for the JDocument class. It was kind of like you really had to copy the class there was no way of extending that and now with that it was really like you get a lot of problems with when you upgrade the Joomla you had when you in the new Joomla version provide a new function J document you had always to backport that then into your copy file in your extension and on different Joomla version if the extension is used in different Joomla version you had then problems like with incompatibility and yeah it was kind kind of messy 
And now with the service approach, it's, um, it's much more easier. If you, for example, if you want to provide in core your own instances of a, of a JFORM instance, the only thing you have to do now is to listen to the, to the on before execute event that's, that's triggered before the application is executed, before any JFORM is loaded and everything. And you can register then on the container a new service provider which returns then my awesome form factor. It's not needed anymore that we, we rely on same class names. So you can basically provide them whatever you want and you can extend from the default implementation. So you just have the pieces you want override. You just have to do that then. And the rest is just inherited from um, from the default form factor, like the way how it is, how normal inheritance class extending is working. <clears throat> so would that mean that we'd be able to override the model that Home Content uses? For yeah. That's then the thing. Almost everything you add, you, yeah. And in a in a clean PHP way, yeah. without even without. registering your own class path with a copy of. Because till now you had to do that with a copy of articles model. Well, so, no, get instance allows you to get around that. Because you, if you if you inject it, if you created your own instance before com content did, then it would use the one you created. But that wasn't possible given before until this. Mm -hmm. That's good. So what if I register my awesome form factory and somebody else is registering his or her awesome form factory? Who wins? The, the last plugin which get loaded is in the ordering of the plugins. And basically what you can do then is you can also use the, the wrapper pattern where you basically you do then on the container. I don't know if that's really best practice which I should explain now. But yeah, if you really want to have that kind of like chain for that, you can then like make a wrapper class which basically gets the existing um, service provided from the container and wraps that then and just overrides what, what you need but don't think so that's best practices <laughs> that's for global services like even Michael Bobker has now a pull request for do that for mailer and jdocument jform and the same we can do now also on the extension level as I said your example um, if you want to override or manage by your own the um, the MVC classes like model uh, we have table also in the MVC factory but views and controllers you can do that then with a single line of code uh, so with a simple statement for the MVC factory factory interface you register then your own awesome factory there are two two new um, plugin events introduced and on after extension boot and uh, on before extension boot event. At that point I want to show that how that looks like now in... Um, how can I quickly switch to another cross? Like Sorry? without entering, going to the project explorer, finding a new class? Um, shift shift you can do or you can do... Oh. Yeah, that was exactly what I mean. Um, we have that also for of a, a trait for that. Um, that's not so important, but here we have the boot component function, which basically does internally, it loads the extension. And the workflow is like that, that um, yeah, we're caching the extensions and then we, are, we have a function get container which is basically then returns um, a DI container and we do create child of that. And then we trigger the on before extension boot event with the, with the calling class, with the type we are doing it. That's at the moment we have only components. I have a pull request open for modules and then I want to do one for plugins. But basically we are using the same principles across all of the extensions and then you get the extension name and the containers you kind of like can do 
stuff before the extension get booted. Then we read that's the only file now which kind of like needs a common uh, defined class, uh, defined um, path in the in the in the in a folder. You have the extension path which is on the administrator side, like administrator components com content, and there you have need to have a file, uh, folder services with a provider.php. And that was the example I showed before, where you register all the services and then um, the component interface service. It does a file check and then it calls the register function. And basically now, after this register function, the, the container is, is then fully set up. We provide that also in a legacy way, that if a component is not supporting that new way, especially components from Joomla 3, then we fall back to a legacy, which does then all the the file system lookups and loading that class path names automatically. And then there is the on after extension boot event where you basically can then start as I, shown, as I showed in the example before, where you basically can then override the services for the component. That if, for example, if you want then for com content, provide your own models, you can then override the form factory service. There's some and here, when I do container get, and this type is then component interface class, actually here is then content component created, which provides that services. Is that procedure more or less a bit clear? I guess, yeah, it will become much clearer when you have then a look in the code and debug all the steps. It's, it's really, um, it's kind of like, how is it, you have to, get that into that once and then it should be it should be possible. So basically we have now the thing is the good thing is about that we have now one place where we do that. It's not like um, JMod legacy is using the file the file path for one function and com categories for for the categories and everything was so disconnected. The associations did different things, there were different paths and it was just like as a new extension developer it was really hard to get into these things and now there there should be it's a, it's a different way of doing that it's, it also needs learning curve but it should be more clear yeah two things actually the short array syntax is the default in Vina 4 yeah that's nice and the second one we're just talking about new developers i'm looking at this code and like are the current developers that probably have to make a, quite a big step to the current way we're doing things to the new mm -hmm. uh, dependency injection way because it's something well, that's not present at all in the mm -hmm. And I find the concept not that easy. I, I mean, it's not very difficult, but it, it does take some time to get used to it. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how that is for new extension or the existing extension developers. To rebuild their extensions or use this. Mm. And to have it backward compatible. Yeah. Because when you have an extension, you want to have it uh, Joomla 4 and Joomla 3, sometimes other people will even uh, listen to How can you have it uh, backward compatible? Um, the thing is, I'm in the same boat, like every extension okay. developers, because I do also extension by my own. So I we really keep. Um, keep a lot or, or put a lot of resources into um, into backwards compatibility. We really like <laughs> at the moment it's um, it's easy possible or it's easy possible like we've just really removed a couple of things for Joomla 4 which got um, deprecated since a long long time. I even had quite a bit of a hard stand to get rid of J-exception and J-error, which got deprecated in Joomla 1.7. <laughs> and that's quite a long time ago and it still existed till now. And our approach is that a Joomla extension for Joomla 3, which is more or less up to date, which is not using J-request anymore or um, other things like the old way of J event dispatcher 
If that thing is get removed, it should work out of the box in Joomla 4, during the whole life cycle of Joomla 4. I was thinking what, what Roman said, that he, or I understood that he wants to update to the new uh, way of doing it, mm -hmm. and that you need, still need to have it uh, compatible with uh, Joomla 3. Yeah. So, is, what I'm thinking is if you want to have one extension that runs on both, the only thing you can do is have an up-to-date Joomla 3 version because Joomla 4 will run the Joomla 3 one and you cannot have a Joomla 4 version running in Joomla 3. Actually, that's something I try to achieve. I don't know if, will, if I will have success, but I mean, it's also in my personal interest that I want to have an actual component which also works in Joomla 3 because I don't want to have to maintain two code bases. Exactly, that's yeah. the, the thing you really want to avoid. Yeah, and I put a lot of time and energy into that. And yeah, the the idea of Joomla now 3.10 is that you should be able to work probably with some minor adjustments, a Joomla 4 extension in Joomla 3. That's a target I tried to achieve. The problem will probably be with really new, new kick-ass features, if I, if I can call them like that that probably these features we are not going to backport because then there is no reason to make a Joomla 4 <laughs> if we put every feature back. But like uh, a standard Joomla component running on Joomla, made for Joomla 4, I try to to work to make them work also in Joomla 3. You just to make sure your code base that you write yourself supports PHP 5.6 because Joomla runs on 5.6, Joomla 3. 5.3 No, but uh, yeah, what I mean is in Joomla 4 code Yeah um, The code examples you've shown now is PHP 7 code Yeah And it will never run in Joomla 3 because of the PHP version mm. Yeah, but the, that's true, but I mean many extension developers, they started to make the rise their minimum PHP versions For example, in my extension, my minimum PHP version, you have to be installed is 5.5 and I mean, that's already end of life. Yeah, but the typing thing doesn't work in PHP 5. Yeah, that's... If you, if you write your code mm -hmm. like that, then it's not going to run on PHP 5. I made a first pull request to backport some of the namespacing, these kind of features, and yeah, I had to remove that then in 3.10. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. if you want to have one extension that runs on both versions, you have to watch out also, not only for the Joomla version, but also the PHP version. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, for your customer to update, of course, mm. also to PHP 7 because 5.6 is end of life at the end of this year, mm. and PHP 7.0 is end of life at the end of this year. Then maybe, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's, it's like it's a challenging thing to basically backport for a new code base to the old one. I even I can't really make a promise that I can achieve that, but I try. And we'll see how far we'll come. But the, I guess the more important thing is that the Joomla 3 component, which is more or less up to date, will run then on Joomla 4, I guess. Because then during the whole life cycle of Joomla 4, an extension developer will have enough time then to migrate his extension to Joomla 4. Because in, there, is a, there was with Joomla 3, there was one point where you, where you see it was like, for my experiences, it was around Joomla 3.2 where you, have, you start to, to see that there is a shift. People really trusted in Joomla 3 because it was like all these bugs were out and this kind of stuff. And yeah, it was like this, this shifting time where people actually migrated to Joomla 3. They used Joomla 3 for new websites. And I, get, I expect that this will be the same. I guess it's not, it will be not the case that when Joomla 4.0 will out that the whole community is migrating to Joomla 4.0 because of incompatible extension. It needs some time and I guess that will be then the same for, for an extension developer that there will be on some point, there will be, there will be a way that or there will be the point that people are starting to change and you have to adapt the new code base as well. And so you can start already, of course, because in Joomla 3.8, we uh, implemented a lot of the new class names. Yeah. 
it was just like new even it was the, the move to to namespaces but not actually new features which no. get backboarded. And then you get customers that are running outdated units. Like yeah. But from my experience it was like people are actually when I see it on my support platform, people actually are very good in updating their most often on relatively up to date Joomla installation. And I think also the hosting providers are better doing now because by providing the new PHP 7 versions much sooner than yeah. way before. Mm -hmm. um, I have just five minutes left. I want to um, show you an example how we did that in a backwards compatible way. Um, that's the example from JForm get instance function. Uh, before it was like that that when a new form is created, we made it new, it's new static because it's the class itself, but basically you would write a new J form. And what we are doing now is we are proxying that to the container and fetching from, from the container the form factory interface, which is now, which acts now as a service. And on that, we know we get in the form factory back and can call there the create form function. That's JForm, uh, JFactory get container is just a transition function. In your extension, you really should try to avoid to call that because that's basically, basically turns the DI container into service locator, which we on the long term don't want to have in core. But for the transition period, like till we fully inject that because the problem is when we inject for example a form factory now in the MVC stack if we make in the constructor like a, a new argument form factory interface then we have a really really hard PC break so we have to kind of like default that to null that existing extensions are still using or can still use the new one and in the, in the constructor, when we see that we don't get a form factory interface into the constructor injected, we are calling the form J form factory get container. But yeah, if we can, we should try to avoid that. Um, this way of um, implementing backwards compatibility is that we are not breaking extensions. We are deprecating them we try or we added for every deprecated function we added the deprecate annotation and a deprecation message what you should do instead of calling that um, function good slides are online on my website and now are there some more questions so. um. Can you show the code for the com content um, boot? Com content? You mean the component? Yeah. So I can I can see how that would work for com content. You've got com content started, and you can access the model. You can access the view from the container. That's that's how it works basically. Mm -hmm. Yes. What if you have you want to have, have access to parts of com content, say from a module? So you you want the content model. And you haven't kickstarted the whole of the com content container and all the bits. Mm -hmm. How would you get access to the model? Um, Does the question make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, there is this MVC factory service interface which component or content uh, component is implementing. That has a function create MVC factory which uh, where you get an MEC factory interface back and that then has this function create control or create model. Right. So if, if you're on a com content page and that's run through, you'll get the one that's been created by com content already. But if you're a new module on a different page, it will create a new instance. Sorry, wrong word. It will create a new model. That's because the com content hasn't run. Ah, now I know. Um, you mean if the mo if the in the module it's loaded before 
No, no, the, the module's loaded after the comp comp component. Yeah. So if you're on a com if you're on a com content page, mm -hmm. com content has created the module, the model already. So the module would use the one that was created by com content. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're now loading that module, say on a DP calendar page, which isn't mm -hmm. com content, it's going to get its own version of the model, or yeah, it's got its own instance of a model. But if it was on com content, it would reuse the one that was in com content. Actually, I don't think so. Right. Actually, we are not caching the models. I mean, if stuff like that gets um, gets an issue, we kind of like have to see if we want to cache this stuff or put the caching flag or whatever. Wouldn't it already be in the container then that content model? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you're on the com content page, it would be in the container. Yeah. But if you're not on the com content page, it wouldn't be in the container. No, then it would have to not create it itself. Yeah, then you could just create the new one. But even like caching, I mean, that's what is in the container is only the MVC factory which create or uh, which creates these factories to to make the models instances, and that's then only that is for the model itself is not ca or not put into the container itself. Right. So. But yeah, honestly, I didn't put much um, much effort into that caching issues to, to see if models can reuse. It basically goes into the way of reusing the model across different contexts. Or... I'm just thinking, because if somebody is, it's a, an odd situation, if somebody has modified the module, the model, sorry, in com content, I'd like to think that the module would also pick up that modified one as opposed to mm. creating its own container and possibly getting one that hasn't. Yeah. Is, is that the, the boot extension? What was it? They have to execute boot. Exec, uh, that um, method. <coughs> yeah, the, the, you'd have to call that twice, wouldn't you? Yeah, uh, but then there you get back the, the same instance of that. Right. Because, for example, when we are dispatching now a component which basically renders its content and all this does on the controller execute, that's also done through boot component now. Yeah. I guess we need to do some kind of like research what actually we want to do for this caching things. Are there more questions? I have a question again. <laughs> if you can go back to your slides and then the second to last. Where you're showing the form factory. Yeah. And they're using the J factory, and why not the namespace Juna CMS factory? Um, I'm not sure that's quite an old PR. It is like number 16,000. <laughs> I guess um, I was a bit late with the namespacing the J factory. I don't even know if at that point J factory was namespaced or not, but yeah, I mean, both sides were. I was wondering if there was a reason. Yeah. Or yeah. Other than the name of <laughs> <laughs> No, no, there was no no special reason. No, for that. Okay. And still, people which are actually doing <coughs> extensions, they are more familiar with J factory than the namespace. The J error, J exception you mentioned, it's completely removed, right? Mm -hmm. It's all exceptions. Um, yeah, it's all uh, exceptions. PHP yeah. But we got put deprecate message. as good for removal you basically can't add a deprecate message but i mean for that it's now uh, exceptions and for um yeah j error was a bit more complicated but we put proper deprecated messages on the three version that you can upgrade yeah, yeah so to have an example uh, to understand everything the the Com content is the one that uh, is fully G4 compatible. Yeah, there are two, three open pull requests, but it's basically just about namespacing um, some helper classes. But all of what is, uh, I've shown now, we did everything of that for com content. So com content is most actual version. The only pull request which is not merged now is about uh, the service, uh, the root service, but it. Can also, it probably would be not bad if your guys interested to have a look on that pull request. 
um, it basically showcases how you add a new service to, to an existing uh, component. Yeah. Um, Roland uh, said just at the beginning, asked the question, so we were able to, uh, on the front end, to have uh, several components. Today we don't have, we only have one component, but mm -hmm. now we can have several. I didn't, have. I didn't test it, but I guess it should be possible now with the current app. And if not, then there should be just minor or minor kind of code changes, but it's not the kind of like what we have now in Joomla 3. It's that it's an architecture problem where we have just one global instance of a control node. But if, 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 it's, if, if it is true and if it works, then could mean that modules are not uh, imported anymore. We can just remove modules. Mm. Are Pro they saying something stupid? No, but it works. Yeah. Probably should turn for that the camera off, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really a fan of this idea to get rid of modules and plugins and this kind of stuff and that we just have an extension and you because that's the mo I guess that's the most confusing thing when you when people come new to Joomla on the integrator side, not as, also for developer, but it's more important for the integrators that they have to choose between a model and a component. And at the beginning, you really have no clue what's the difference is. And in WordPress is always the example for that. You just have plugins and these. A lot of people call, mod call components modules. Yeah. And to continue on your question, is we have spoken about this in the past, is that a module is nothing else than a view of a component. Exactly. Just a different representation of the mm. data that's coming out of a component because mm. the module itself doesn't generate any data. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. That's why, for example, now in a module can basically do the same. You can do. Um, I change that in one of the article latest models or whatever and you can do then app boot component com content and create mvc factory and create model and you have a you have the articles models then in the module because mostly yeah you have a, a module you need a model in your module from a component fetching the data and rendering the view for that No more questions? Everybody hungry? <laughs> Good, then thank you very much for the interest. Thank you very much.